Welcome to Oracle APM tutorial series. Application Performance Monitoring is a service in Oracle Cloud infrastructure that provides a set of solutions including distributed tracing, real user monitoring, and synthetic monitoring. This recording covers introduction and setup, which is a part one of the tutorial. My name is Yutaka Takatsu. I am one of the product managers in Observability and Management product management team in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. The tutorial consists of five different video recordings, which you can find in this Oracle channel. Each recording is about 20 to 30 minutes long. Please find the video links to the other chapters from the description in this video. This is a recording of part one, introduction and setup. Let's kick off the tutorial with the introduction of the service. Application Performance Monitoring, or APM in short, is a new service in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. It helps you to monitor cloud native and enterprise application. Either there is a microservices application running on Kubernetes or a package application with traditional multi-tier architecture, APM tracks every step of every transaction, allowing you to envision the complete set of trace data with rich user interface on Oracle Cloud Console. You can visualize the data with out-of-the-box dashboards that are predefined for common use cases or create your own custom dashboard that meets your specific requirements. Captured data is stored in an internal database for real-time and historical data analysis. Using a built-in SQL-like query language, you can flexibly retrieve the data and come up with a desired result set to diagnose issues in your application. You can run additional breakdown by filtering the data with predefined and custom dimensions to narrow down the data selections, which allows you to run deep dive analysis to identify the root cause of the issues. All these result in reduced downtime, enhanced visibility into the performance in your distributed systems with better user experience and satisfaction. APM delivers four and plus distinct capabilities. Distributed tracing, which captures full traces from applications allowing you to run deep dive analysis and diagnostics. Real user monitoring, that measures end user performance and satisfactions. Synthetic monitoring, which proactively runs predefined transactions from global locations to measure the user experience of your critical application flows. And server monitoring, which collects metrics from its own Java-based data sources also from other technologies using Prometheus Scraper capability. Additionally, APM is integrated with other Oracle services that allows you to extend analysis in other services in Oracle Cloud, such as stack monitoring, logging analytics, and database management services. We will discuss more about each APM capability in this tutorial. Let's go over the architecture of APM service. At the left side of the screen, you see the logos of cloud vendors. Say, this is where your application resides. Your application may be running in Oracle Cloud or your traditional on-premise data centers or in other cloud platforms such as AWS or Microsoft Azure. To capture the application data, you need to instrument a tracer or a data source. APM supports open tracing and open telemetry standards, so you can use the data sources that APM provides for instrumentation, or you can use other tracers such as Jaeger or Zipkin. Whatever the tracer you use, every event you have in your application will become a span. A group of spans is called a trace, which represents a transaction in your application. Server metrics are captured through the data source as well. The traces, spans, and metrics are then sent to APM server over HTTPS. At the lower side of the screen, there is a browser which you can use APM browser agent to capture spans. And there are vantage points, which are the data collection locations for synthetic monitors. The vantage points are available out of the box in any commercial data centers in Oracle Cloud where APM service is available. Once the data flows into the APM server, it is stored in the autonomous database in Oracle Cloud, which is a storage dedicated to APM customers. Data can be extracted on demand and displayed on the APM dashboards or Trace Explorer user interface for real-time and historical analysis. 
Data is also sent to the monitoring service where you can set an alarm or configure to send email notifications. Now let's quickly review the APM service from the Oracle Cloud Console web interface. What I have on the screen is the Oracle Cloud login page. Select your tenancy and click Next. Enter your username and password and sign in. Oracle Cloud Get Started page opens. Click the navigation menu from the top left corner. Then select Observability and Management. Here you see menus under Application Performance. These are the pages where you can use APM to monitor your applications, diagnose problems, and manage and configure the APM setup. Let's click Home, which opens the home page of the APM service. You can see the overview information of performance and the status of the monitored applications in particular APM domain. From the top menu, you can access other APM features such as dashboards. APM provides predefined dashboards that cover specific areas in your interest, such as real user monitoring, synthetic monitors, or app servers. And the home page you just saw, in fact, is one of the predefined dashboards too. In addition to them, you can create your own custom dashboards that are tailored to your specific use cases. Let's see one of the predefined dashboards. Here open the real user monitoring dashboard, having information related to users, such as the location of the user or app text, which indicates how happy the users are, also what devices they use, and page load information from users' perspectives. Another APM feature that you can visualize the data is Trace Explorer. In Trace Explorer, you can monitor traces and spans collected by different data sources and visualize it in the various display options. By default, traces are presented in the Gantt chart, as you can see in the screen. In addition, you can see the data in a topology view to envision how the spans and services are connected in a single trace. Trace Explorer provides SQL-like query language, which allows you to flexibly create a view of a specific set of traces. There are also a set of predefined queries you can start with for common use cases. Once you get the result, many times you want to see more details. You can further filter down the results using out-of-the-box or custom metrics and dimensions, and view details of the individual spans and their attributes to analyze the customer behaviors, find the performance bottlenecks, or troubleshoot program errors. Now let's see synthetic monitoring. Here you can see a list of synthetic monitors currently running in the APM domain. There are different types of monitors, such as browser, scripted browser, scripted REST, or REST. Clicking the Enable Monitor opens a monitor homepage where you can see the general information of the monitor the type of the monitor, name of the script, in which vantage points it runs, and how frequently it is executed. By selecting History from the Resource menu, you can see the execution history of the monitor, such as when it was running, in which location, and how long it took. So that was a synthetic monitoring. Next I would like to show you is the administration page. This is where you can download Java Agent Installer to your local file systems so that you can upload it to the location where your application is running. An administration page is also where you can set up APM domain and configure the related features. So that was a quick introduction of APM service in Oracle Cloud. We will see more details about these pages later in this tutorial. Now we'll move over to the chapter two. Okay, so chapter two. So in this chapter, I will go over the policies and permissions that are required to start using APM, then talk about the APM domain and how we can collect the data upload endpoints and data keys, which are the parameters you will need when deploying data collectors. To start working with APM, you will need to run a few prerequisites in the Oracle Cloud Console. First, you need a compartment where you create an APM domain. Compartment is a feature in Oracle Cloud that helps you organize and isolate your cloud resources. 
It is a tenancy-wide logical namespace where you can enforce policies and create cloud resources, just like folders in the file system. You can either use your existing compartment or create a new compartment that is designated for APM use. Next, you'll need users who can log on to Oracle Cloud Console and use APM services, such as managing APM domain, monitoring APM metrics, or creating alarms. The APM users can also belong to a group that is permitted to use APM services. Then you will need to create policies which determine who can do what on which resources. In this case, the policies will be created for the APM users and groups to manage the Oracle Cloud resource in a specific compartment. For example, you can allow users in a group APM GRP to grant read permissions to all the APM domains in a specific compartment. There are four types of APM policies that are showing in the table in the screen. First two policies are essential to use APM service. APM policies control access to view or manage tasks in APM domains, and monitoring policies grant permissions to access APM metrics and set up alarm and notifications. The latter two policies in the table are optional as they are designed to control the permissions for specific features in APM, such as to create a custom dashboard or create a vantage point in case you are not an OCI administrator. Let me show you a sample flow to set up APM as an example. In this simple file diagram, you have a headed on based microservice application that runs on Kubernetes. You want to use APM to monitor the microservices. There are a few options to do this, but you have decided to use APM Tracer as a data source. What you will do first is to obtain data upload endpoint and data keys from the APM domain. Then go to the application's project directory, edit configuration file such as application YAML file, and add data upload endpoint and data key which you copied from the APM domain. Then rebuild and redeploy the application. Soon the data source starts sending the trace and spans to the APM domain with the provided data and the point URL. There are additional capabilities you can also manage in the APM domain page. First, there is aptX thresholds, which is a set of rules that you can manage in the APM domain page. AptX can be used to measure the levels of user satisfaction. There are also span filters and metric groups. They can be used to define a set of custom spans and metrics that are pushed to the monitoring service so that they can create alarm against. I will explain these topics with more details in the later chapters in the tutorial. Moving on to the chapter three, working with data sources. APM provides data sources for different use cases. We'll go through the data collectors options and discuss the deployment examples. The term data source in APM refers to the programs that gather monitoring data from the target applications and upload to APM. APM has several different types of data sources as displayed on the screen. They are the APM browser agents, Java agent, or tracer or synthetic monitors. Each data source has different use cases and deployment steps. APM browser agent can be used in the front end of the web application to collect spans and metrics. You need to manually edit a file in application such as index.html to add a JavaScript statement to instrument the browser agent. APM Java agent can be used to collect the spans and metrics from the J2EE application servers such as WebLogic, Tomcat, or JBoss. To do so, first you'll need to download the Java agent installer from the APM domain, then provision and deploy the agent in application using the command line user interface. APM Java Tracer can be used with Java applications having open tracing enabled. You need to edit the configuration files and Java files in order to deploy the tracer. APM has capability to use non-Oracle open source tracers such as Jaeger or Zipkin in case of the open tracing enabled applications. Just like the APM tracer, you'll need to modify the files to instrument the tracer. Synthetic monitors are used for synthetic monitoring. You'll need to create the test script with a specific transaction workflow 
that runs periodically and send information back to APM. Once you determine the type of the data source you want to use, the next is to configure and deploy it to your application. This slide shows examples of how the data sources can be deployed on different types of applications. So if you have Helidon-based microservices, which runs on Kubernetes cluster, you can use APM Java Tracer as a data source for the server side and APM Browser Agent for the front end. As for the deployment steps, you will need to manually edit the Java code and configuration files such as POM XML or application YAML files. Let's see the setup details. In this example setup, there is a Helidon-based microservice application running on Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes cluster. There are two replicas of the deployments deployed, and the application was built in the Maven project using Oracle Cloud Shell. The application connects an Oracle Autonomous Database with JDBC, and the users of the application use React.js front-end web user interface to connect to the server in Oracle Cloud using API Gateway. So this is the application you want to monitor using APM. Let's go through the deployment steps. First, you will create an APM domain and obtain data upload endpoint and data keys. Then add that information to the application's configuration file. You also need to modify the project object model or POM file in Maven and Java code as well, adding the APM Java tracer. Then rebuild the application and deploy to the Kubernetes cluster. Once the pods are deployed in a minute or two, traces and spans are sent to the APM domain where the data upload endpoint was obtained. Incoming data is secured by the data key, so only the authenticated data comes into APM. At the front end side of the application, you deploy the APM browser agent by manually inserting a JavaScript. Data upload endpoint and public data key are required here. Another data source option you have for Helidon microservice application is to use the Java agent hybrid mode. Using the hybrid mode feature, spans are collected from Java agent side with bytecode instrumentations, also from the application's open tracing instrumentations, and provide a complete picture of the application flow. So, for example, if the application makes JDBC calls connecting to an Oracle database, this method provides correlating traces connecting Helidon service spans and JDBC spans. Let's see the setup details for this model. Here is the same application setup with the one we just saw, but this time you want to configure Java agent hybrid mode. To do so, first download APM agent installer from the APM domain then provision it in a directly in the Oracle Cloud shell. Hybrid mode must be enabled in the agent config file. Next, edit the Docker file to add the agent in the Docker image and deploy the pods to the Kubernetes cluster. Soon the traces and spans are sent to the APM domain from the Java agent. Finally, add APM browser agent to the front end. So those were the options for the open tracing enabled Java applications. Then what about the legacy enterprise applications, such as J2E applications running on top of WebLogic server? You can use APM Java agent in this case, but this becomes tricky if the application is deployed on a Kubernetes cluster. Because Kubernetes pods are transient in nature, agent installation can be lost when the pods are recreated or restarted. An approach to resolve this problem is to use a shared file system to install the Java agent. Let's see how that can be done in the setup details. Unlike the other two examples, this time the setup is WebLogic Java application. WebLogic domain is running on a Kubernetes cluster, and it was provisioned using WebLogic operator, which is one of the utilities in WebLogic toolkit that manages the WebLogic resources in the Kubernetes. First, create a shared file system, then create a persistent volume and persistent volume claim in the Kubernetes cluster. Then download Java agent from the APM domain and provision it in the mounted volume. Next, deploy the APM agent to the WebLogic server through the WebLogic operator. 
And once the web logic operator restarts the pods, traces, spans, and metrics are sent to the APM domain. And lastly, deploy the APM browser agent to the front end. Note for all examples, the front end requires an APM browser agent. If you want to learn more about APM data source setups, we have workshops available on Oracle Live Labs. Currently, there are three workshops that cover the examples mentioned in the previous slides. This is the end of the recording of part one, introduction and setup of application performance monitoring service in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Please find the links to other chapters of the APM tutorial series from the description in this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.